There is a sense of an ease among clerical leaders in Kumi Diocese as they are again required to take a fresh oath for the job. Only 19 is that we are supposed to go and vote. To uh, reaffirm the votes, the, the votes. Me, I will not go because I've never seen such a scenario. I even rang to some retired clergy. They said that thing is not there. So those people, they have got what you call logic. Since I entered into church in 1970s, I've never seen such a thing happening. I had two certificates. That one when I was a deacon, and that one when, when I was a priesthood. That is the whole process, I think, because I worked even in the time of the late Bishop Elukor. I have never heard about this. When you don't go, they might kick you out. Yes, that you didn't vote again, and you don't have a license. Because preaching a word of God doesn't need any license. The caretaker bishop of Kumi Dasis, Charles Odurkami, does not shy away from the requirement for the church leaders to retake the oath. Here, people once ordained, they assume all is well and they continue. So we are calling them to come. Because with that division now and with the rebellion that has gone on, right now you cannot know who is still with you and who is outside. He says that the failure by the church to administer routine oaths is a huge mistake. A call can be lost. Because if you are called at some times and you don't follow, you can lose the call. And you will remain with the caller, you will remain in ministry, when what you are preaching is no longer the actual word of life. You are preaching your own things. But because you are caller, people assume you are. So it is always good to renew your vows. Both parties recommend the need for the church to keep personal records of the religious leaders right from the time they joined the priesthood. Once somebody has been announced as bishop-elect of any diocese and is given an appointment letter, any allegations coming later will not be accepted. And before anybody is announced as bishop-elect, they have to do thorough investigation marriage status, the age, education status. Uh, the challenge is these things are done um, in privacy. Sometimes you just have to get the names and then uh, elect. But if there's any query after, that's when you always come back and say, wait a minute, what is this? There is always room for that. And there are some people who have been falsely accused of having done ABC. But investigation is done and they are found to be free. I think the church must work more on those documentation and keeping the records. And once the record is well kept and all the information, because during ordination you provide those information. But it's unfortunate that I think the church has not been keen to keep its information confidential as it's supposed to be and properly because there are cases where you go to a diocese and you find that even somebody's personal file is missing. This is the weakness that has come. The weakness that is outside there has even entered the church. That in addition to carrying out an investigation on a nominee for bishop before the declaration, the House of Bishops holds the absolute powers to appoint and disappoint. This was an oversight that I think people did not do the investigation enough. They trusted that the information that had come but true was true, which turned out not to be. And so this is the mistake that the church made. But then revoking election is accepted and that saves the church and saves it from even setting a precedence politics in the church is singled out for some of these tensions. There is a lot of sin, a chain of sin, a chain of sin. Politics to be in the church, no truth, no transparency, and you oppress the people of the lower level. Christians expect a good example from the church leaders. Now they turn to be the rulers of the church. Problem I'm seeing 
politics is beginning to affect the church. And bribery is also beginning to affect the church. Under normal circumstances, when it comes to the process of electing a bishop, no candidate is supposed to campaign. No candidate is supposed to pay any money to anybody, even to members of the nomination committee, so that his name can be nominated. But of late, I want to say with a lot of grief, that once the office is falling back and people begin to move around. I definitely, there is a lot of sexualism everywhere. And it, and the social dynamics. We ensure we educate the people and teach them on matters of constitution so that they will be well empowered. It has affected the church seriously because most of the Christians now feel they, 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 should, not, they should no longer be in the church of Uganda. Some people need to migrate. They need to go to other churches. So that is that's what has affected our Christians. Anglican community forms 32% of the population in Uganda. Jackson Onyango, NTV.